Well, welcome back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. In prior What's Up videos, I've discussed the Uyghur re-education centers in China, and people have asked me, who are they and where do they live? So today I'd like to cover a little bit of this. You know, in the BBC article, it asks the question, who are the Uyghurs and why is China being accused of genocide? Well, there are about 12 million Uyghurs that are mostly of the Muslim faith and they live in the northwestern part of China. The Uyghurs live in an independent area of China, but they face many restrictions by the central Chinese government. About one-fifth of the world's cotton is raised in the Uyghur area. Human rights groups believe that China has detained more than a million Uyghurs over the past few years in what China defines as re-education camps. There is evidence of Uyghurs being used as forced labor and women being forcibly sterilized. Now look at this picture of the re-education center with Constantine wire around the perimeter of it. Living in such remote and hostile locations, what do you think these Uyghur families know about Jesus? Do they know anything? Are there any missionaries going into their areas today? Well, the Uyghur language is just one of over 7,000 languages spoken on earth. So how many years will it take to reach over 7,000 languages? Do you have any idea how long it will take missionaries to reach all of these languages? Well, I want you to look at this short video. This is from an individual that is a 30-year a veteran in sending missionaries around the world. And take a look at what he estimates will be the time it will take to reach all 7,000. Still have 6,000 languages to go. Yeah, um, about 6,000. Correct. Wow. <laughs> so, what's our progress? How fast are we entering into these? Well, I've, I've uh, calculated uh, various time periods, and uh, one that uh, it has, is helpful for uh, estimating is uh, I tracked from uh, 1975, between 1975 and 2010, which is a 35 year period. And, um, mm -hmm. and then if you, if you extend that line out, and if we continued at exactly the same rate as we did uh, on average over those 35 years, and you extended that out, it would, it would take a little over 600 years before you got to about 7,000. Mm. Wow. I don't think that's the pace at which we want to continue. No, right. Wow, over 600 years. Can you imagine that? At the current rate, this missionary expert says that at the current rate of reaching people by missionary workers, it would take over 600 years to reach the 7,000 different language groups on earth. 600 years. Who would have believed that? Well, to put 600 years in perspective, I want you to consider this. Now I'm recording this video in the year 2021. So if you add 600 years to 2021 to make an estimate of when Jesus will return, that moves us out to 2621, 2621. So to give a little perspective of that 600 years, that's over two and a half times the history of the United States since, since its founding. So 600 years is just unbelievable. And I, I don't think we're, we're ever going to get there at the rate we're going. So God does have a plan to reach all 7,000 languages on earth with the good news of Jesus' sacrifice for us. We read in Revelation 14, 4, And I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news 
to proclaim to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, every tribe, and, that's, and every language. That's over 7,000 languages and peoples. So God has predicted, he has prophesied in Revelation 14 that all 7,000 languages will be reached. So God's plan will finish the work and re re reach everyone on earth in, I believe, under three years. Now let me show you how God will accomplish this. I call this mission possible, not mission impossible, but it's mission possible by God's planning and his grace. So in the book of Revelation, God tells us that the 144,000 messengers will be selected and sealed just prior to the Great Tribulation. Now, in my other videos, I cover what the Great Tribulation entails, but we'll touch on a few little points here today. So the Great Tribulation will last 1,335 days. And where do I get that from? I get it from Daniel 12:12, 12, 12, where it says, And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. Blessed. Why are they blessed? They're blessed because at the end of the 1,335 days, Jesus will show up in the cloud to take that the, the saved to heaven. Again, in Revelation 7, 14, we read about the Great Tribulation, and it says, These are they who have come out of the Great Tribulation. These are people that are identified in heaven as coming out of the Great Tribulation. And I believe that Great Tribulation is exactly the 1,335 days uh, identified in Daniel 12, 12. So in the book of Revelation, God tells us that the 144,000 messengers will be selected and sealed just prior to this great tribulation. So this is what God, it's his job to select and seal these people. These will be his special messengers during this time. So in Revelation 7, uh, verses 1 through 3, we read this. And this is very important. Then I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of strife, so they did not blow on the earth or on the sea or even on any tree. And I saw another angel coming up from the east, carrying the seal of God. All right, so what's the picture here? God has, ha has sent out four angels to the four corners of the earth that will blow harm onto the earth. But he's holding them back for a reason. And that reason is in verse 7, or chapter 7, verse 3. And he shouted to these four angels who had been given power. They had been given power by God to harm the land and the sea, and he was, and these four angels are, are told to wait. Don't heart, harm the land or the sea or the trees until you have placed the seal of God on the forehead of his servants. And these servants are the 144,000 servants. They're also called prophets in other places in Revelation. So I believe God will select the 144,000 messengers from every people group, language, and culture. So these messengers will immediately be able to relate to their special groups. So he's going to select them out of all these various groups on earth, and they will already know their language and culture, and they'll be right there amongst them. Now in Ezekiel, there are three texts here that I want you to consider. On the first one here is that the 144 will be brave and strong. In Ezekiel 3, 9, God says, Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks. So he's telling Ezekiel to be brave and not be dismayed. The second point here is that the 144 will be God's messengers to the world. So it says in Ezekiel 3, 4, it says, And go and get uh, to the captives, to the people of you, to the children of your people, and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, 
whether they hear or not, or whether they refuse. So he's uh, to take to the people the exact words that God has pointed out. And the last thing I want you to consider here is that the 144 will speak God's words. And in verse 4 of Ezekiel here, it reads, Then he said to him, me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. So Ezekiel doesn't even need to know what to say because God is going to give them all the words to say to the people in their group, in their area that God raises them up. So let's take a look at the math here. This is kind of interesting. There are 8 billion people on earth, 8 billion, that's approximate. And God is going to reach every one of them before he returns. So 8 billion people and God is going to reach every one of them. So if we consider the 144,000 to be God's messengers amongst the 8 billion people, that will be about one messenger per 55,000 people. So if you live in a town that's under 55,000 or approximately 55,000, you will have one messenger in your town. If you live in a bigger city like New York or Los Angeles, San Francisco, you will have many messengers in those areas. Now I want you to consider this, these poor Wager people. So amongst the 12 million Wagers, I don't know how many missionaries are there today, but Jesus will select uh, 218, and that's my math. God is going to do his math, but that's approximately the number. He's going to select 218 indigenous Wagers overnight. Not over 20 years, not over 30 years, but overnight. And those people, those 218 people, they will already know the Wager language. They won't have to be trained in that. They will know the Wager customs, and they will immediately be effective messengers and spokesmen for God. So that's how I think God is going to finish up the work. He's going to select messengers from around the world of 144,000, and he's going to give them the exact things to say to the people groups in their area. So I pray that you've uh, gotten a, some insight into this from this uh, prophecy update today and stay tuned for more. God bless you and your family.